Ellie was here yesterday and she said to me, you are annoying. You need to let it go. In my heart, I feel how this is and should be. In this video, I attempt to paint a landscape for the very first time. This piece is inspired by Jess Franks. I will put the link to her website below. I just got back from South Carolina for a paint workshop. I was there with the Turquoise Iris, Kenise Co, and Danielle of Brian Vintage Warehouse. Michelle, do we have roaches? No, we don't have roaches this time. We're so excited. <laughs> I've been watching art tutorials on YouTube, trying to apply canvas art to furniture. I've even tried some acrylic paints, and I've learned a lot in the process. One of my favorite things to do is connect with other artists through teaching paint workshops. When you first enter Danielle's store, you see this prayer request wall. What a beautiful way to create community. Every inch of Danielle's store was filled with local artist work and vintage pieces. I came back home inspired to be more courageous and to try the things that I'd been procrastinating on. I hadn't even considered creating a landscape until I saw the work of Jess Franks. This is a master study of one of her pieces. I will put the link below. I was originally going to paint flowers on this buffet. I started the background and I let it sit there for months. They say that procrastination comes from not being able to visualize what it is that you want to do. This was certainly the case for me. So I get like on an obsessed gravy train and I can't seem to get myself off of it. It would be a much happier, less frustrated girl if I could just, yes, here it is, it's good. Pretend that I like things that I don't, but that's, that's not me. I had no clue how to begin, so I decided to match up the top drawer with the horizon line in the painting as a starting point. And then I worked my way down from there. One of the things that keeps me from trying something new is the fear that I will spend hours working on something and hate the result. Often I end up doing nothing and that's not good either. Now that it's over, I think I get it, that you were my junk, I was addicted, you'd raise a red flag. Wasn't a specific tutorial for this, I was just trying to apply the various things I have learned on YouTube. I took a piece of chalk, blocking off the biggest chunks of color. I worked from top to bottom, but you shouldn't really do that. I found out later. I couldn't quit it. You Every time we go out and we meet you all, I want it to be more than just a paint workshop. One of the ways we do that is we put on a skit. This time, the skit was about the extra baggage that we carry and the things that we do to prevent ourselves from just being creative. I use mostly DIY paint for this because it's heavily pigmented and a little will cover very well and go a long way. DIY paint can be used on canvases as well as furniture. Two tips that I have learned through the YouTube videos I've been watching is to try and use bigger brushes. This will help you not get caught up in details and to paint looser. Another tip that really helped was from Ian Roberts. He suggests that you paint shapes, not things. He tells you to look at your painting in terms of blocks of color, starting with the biggest pieces and working your way down. And this was working really well until I got to the trees. If I'm being honest, you kinda catastrophic and I should have been good. Doing the landscape part is fairly easy, but the trees, oh my gosh. I was having a conversation with Dion last night. Why can't I paint these trees? It literally looks like she takes the brush and she goes da 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 da. Boom, 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 boom. Here's a lovely tree. When I tried to do that, I have painted over them so many times. I painted over the trees several times and even Bailey was trying to tell me to just let it go. In this case, I needed to water the paint down a little bit for the trees and I did need to use smaller brushes in this area. 
is my first attempt at painting the trees. I ended up painting over them twice. Then I called Dion and she suggested watered down paint and a much smaller brush. This gave me a result that I was a lot happier with. Hmm. What? What do you think of Debbie's piece? I think it's pretty. I thought it was gonna be like, oh, this is easy, I can paint it in one day. And then I started fiddling with it and obsessing over the details. <laughs> I got to the store early, hoping and praying that I'm gonna finish it today. I am watching Colleen Ballinger. Side note, what other channels do you watch? If you want a list of all the people that I watch, let me know in the comments. Here I'm just painting in the blocks of color. It almost felt like a paint by number because the artist had already done the hard work for me, deciding which colors to put where and which values. I think if this had been a traditional painting, it would have been harder. I'm also obsessed with the way that Jess Franks uses bright colors, and I knew that this would give me a chance to use some of our new bright colors that are coming out soon. These paints are a collaboration with the Turquoise Iris, and I cannot wait for you to try them. As I was painting, I kept thinking about the skit and how it's easier said than done to let go of the extra things that weigh you down. Every time I travel, I overpack. I'm always dragging my suitcases through the airport and struggling to get them in the Uber and to the hotel room because I always bring way too much stuff with me. This is an abbreviated version of our skit. If you would like to see the entire thing, subscribe to my newsletter. It's going out next week. Oh my God, Debbie, what are you doing? I'm so embarrassed. I have these. <laughs> The whole piece looks really, really good, but then when you look at the trees, it's like, ugh, it can't be this hard. You just scribble on some trees. The whole thing is very abstract, so if you have trees that look too realistic, then your eye gets distracted by everything else. I painted over it so many times that now the yellow up in here is bothering me. See those trees? They're way too, like, symmetrical. I'm gonna need to go in there and blur them up a little bit. I was made to feel holy, liquid gold runs through my veins. I love using DIY paint for artwork because it's five times more pigmented. It has the richness of an oil paint, but it dries fast like an acrylic paint, and a little goes a long way. I wanna be more than just a pretty face. Another thing I've learned in the paint tutorials I've been watching is something called atmospheric perspective. Color gets cooler as it fades into the distance, so you want to use warm colors for the foreground and cooler colors as you fade into the background. And this is why I chose a warm gray color to paint the top, sides, and legs of the rest of the buffet. And all I needed was the sample jar. There is a long list of things I learned while creating this project. It's hard to cover it all in a short video. I do go more in depth and create live in my membership group. The link for that is below. I have waxed it, I've finished it. Do you like it? I love it. Yeah, we'll be back with another video. Look at, I've got a dress on, a coat on, I've got my jeans on, and I'm sitting by the heater because it's super cold. What's the temperature here? It's 50. It's crazy cold here in California. She wanted to sit down and dance. So let's, you know the routine? And then you go like this, and then you jump around. I don't think this is as good as actually dancing. Let us know if you like this new sit down dance. I kind of like sitting down and dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Spending money like I just got paid. Hundred dollar bills, tell them keep the change.
To find DIY paint near you or to sell it in your store, click the link below. And to find links to Jess Franks, Danielle's store, the turquoise iris, some of my favorite YouTubers, and many other things, click the description box. Thanks for watching.